Good morning and welcome to Harmony United Methodist Church for our online virtual worship service the weekend of September the 27th. We are so glad that you can join us for this time of worship together. My name is Jeffrey Zalatoris and I'm the pastor here at Harmony United Methodist Church. And today I want to thank Elaine Stuckey for music. I'd like to thank Kristen Shriver for being our liturgist. And I'd like to thank David Elliott as our technical advisor and our technical person for the day. We thank you for joining us in this, our time, as we worship God together. Our pre-recorded worship services, as you know, are premiered each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. If one of those doesn't seem to be working for you on a given day, feel free to try the other one, Facebook or YouTube, for those services. We are worshiping in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, and we are still offering our Wednesday evening prayer and Bible study. It is in sanctuary and over a Zoom connection. Those Bible studies occur at 7 o'clock Wednesday evenings. Please continue to pay attention to the church's website as any changes to our schedule will be posted to the website and also to our Facebook page. And I'd like to invite those of you who are technically savvy that if you would like to uh, help us as we prepare to offer a true live streaming worship service in the coming months, uh, to come in and talk to us. We'd love to train you on our new camera system that's being installed and we're working on the software upgrades for that as well. We'd like a team of folks who are able to come in and help us offer that live stream service here coming up soon. And if you have any prayers or concerns that you would like us to lift together this day in prayer, please feel free to type that into your Facebook messaging as, as we go through the premiere of this worship service Sunday. Let us then prepare our hearts to worship and to celebrate God. Amen.
Come to the house of the Lord. Come with hearts of praise and thanksgiving. In the sight of their ancestors, God worked marvelous wonders in the land of Egypt. God divided the sea and let the people pass through it. God led them with a cloud by day and with a fiery light by night. God split rocks open in the wilderness. Streams flowed out of the rock, the waters flowed down like rivers. Remember, Remember God's, God's mercy. mercy. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by the stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. 
I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? May you be blessed in this holy word. Thanks be to God. Testament with Paul's letter to the Philippians, reading chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. May you be blessed in hearing this holy word. Thanks be to God. Moses was put in a difficult place by the wandering refugees from Egypt. 
Now Moses must have thought that this people would be excited and joyful, celebrating day and night as they were rescued from Egypt, jubilant at their freedom from Pharaoh's grasp. Moses probably thought this people would fall right in line with him and be readily obedient to everything God asked and to follow everywhere God led them. But they complained and they quarreled. Why couldn't they appreciate their freedom? Sure, they were in danger sometimes, and at times they were starving, and yes, at times on the verge of dehydration and thirst. But why couldn't they be joyful as they walked almost aimlessly in the arid wastelands of the desert? Can you imagine feeling overjoyed despite wandering aimlessly in a desert with no sign or promise of water? How long would you last without complaining? Let us pray. Holy God, breathe mercy and compassion into us and prepare us for discipleship by your grace, through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Do we ever act like that Moses moment? Have we ever gotten upset at the people who can't think for themselves in the moment or who don't fend for themselves or the people who don't appreciate what we do for them? Has anyone ever driven by that person standing alongside the road, carrying a sign, pleading for money, and had the thought cross your mind, no, I won't give today, he'll just use it to get drunk? I met a woman once, technically she was a homeless, jobless woman, she was receiving minimal food assistance. When I met her, she talked about going out onto the street to show her sign, the sign that she used to beg for food from the cars that would stop at the nearby traffic light. Now she had some food assistance, and from a homeless service ministry, she could sleep in a motel, even a run-down motel where she stayed. And so I thought, why? Why stand at the street begging money from the drivers and the passengers who went by? But there are some things that food and a roof over her head did not give her. A sense of dignity and a sense of the meaningfulness in her life. The only people nearby who even knew her name were a chaplain, the motel manager, and a couple of other homeless folks. When I listened to her, I heard a woman who deeply wanted to show compassion to somebody. She wanted to participate in caring for someone else, but she had no one to care for. And so she showed mercy on some stray cats that happened to roam around the outside of the motel. It happened to be the only meaningful thing to her in life. It was the one way she knew how to participate in love. So she would go out to the main road, flip her sign around, get some handouts of money. When she had enough, she would buy some cat food and feed the cats. Now I could have been judgmental towards her. And in my own mind, there were reasons I felt that this was bad or poor judgment on her part But the more I listened to her, the more I realized this gave meaning to her life. It was her reason to live. It was her reason to thrive. As a child of God, she deserved not only to receive love, but to share love as well. This was her way of participating in life and love. Participation in life, participation in ministry. This is key to our Christian discipleship. So I invite you today to reflect, how can you participate in Christian discipleship this week or this year? Christian discipleship, as you know, is about community. It is also about our personal relationship to God and neighbor and ourselves. 
and our paths of discipleship are unique to each one of us and how we relate to God. Yet, despite differences, we share one thing in common across all Christian discipleship, that it requires our participation. Not just watching God perform, but working for God's good pleasure. So why then does it matter that you and I participate in working out our faith? Let's return to that Exodus story for a moment. That people who had fled Egypt were in a faith desert. They were estranged from God after 400 years of living in Egypt. And somewhere, somehow, they'd lost their relationship from God. Maybe they'd succumbed to the pleasures of the easy life in Egypt before they'd been enslaved. Maybe they were enamored to the Egyptian gods like Osiris, Isis, and Anubis, or maybe their relationship to God was taken from them and their hope taken from them after their enslavement. We don't know how they became estranged from God, but the people had become enslaved of body and mind and soul, and their hope had been taken. They did not know God. Why does it matter that we participate in discipleship? Because those who lose faith and lose their relationship to God, they also lose the freedom and the hope and the peace that God offers. When we don't participate in discipleship, we become ever more like Jacob's descendants, still enslaved in Egypt. Now that is not to say that by participating in discipleship, we will have perfect freedom and perfect hope and perfect peace every day of our lives. But by participating in discipleship, we can live through the ebbs and flows of freedom and hope and peace and can have the assurance that God wills us to return to God's freedom, hope, and peace, even should we lose it for a season or so. And I've met people who have lost that feeling of hope and can't find their way back. I've met folks in hospitals and on the streets. I've met people who have no hope and no sense of meaning in life, no purpose. For some of those people, hope was stolen from them. And for others, hope was lost when they'd ignored God and lost faith in God's promise. So when someone has found meaning in life, even by feeding stray cats and praying with a chaplain, all is not lost. Hope remains. Our participation matters because no one is a lost cause in God's eyes, and our participation may find the lost and help the lost find meaning in God. Our participation in someone's life may prevent a person on the verge of loss from falling away. Friends, someone is depending on you to participate actively in your Christian faith. First and foremost, that person is you. But beyond yourself, someone else too, even if you don't know who it is or when that chance to shine will happen, your participation in discipleship matters. So why does Christian discipleship involve participation? Jesus did not call people to sit and watch the world go round. Jesus did not call people to simply like posts and offer thumbs up video content and sharing memes. Jesus invites people to roll up their sleeves get their hands and their knees dusty and dirty, and fashion their lives to will and to work for God's pleasure. Jesus taught and trained and tested the disciples, and then Jesus trusted them to be the disciples who would lead the next disciples. And that is our inheritance as Christians today. We were discipled 
so that we may disciple others. And so discipling requires our participation. In the passage from Philippians, we heard today how Jesus emptied himself. He humbled himself. Jesus was obedient. That Jesus worked out the path of salvation for us. And in turn, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for God works in you. God enables you to will and to work for God's good pleasure. We are invited then in this reading from Philippians to do just as Jesus did to empty ourselves. Empty ourselves of our greed, of our status, empty ourselves of our self-importance, empty ourselves of things that blind us to the needs of the people around us. For Paul wrote, do not look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. And then, emptying yourselves, accept humility. Just as Christ had emptied himself and was humbled, so too we can be yoked with Christ and humble with Christ. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. And so when we are with Christ, being obedient to God's will and direction will follow naturally. Participation means fulfilling those words. God is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is at work in you. Not that we sit back and watch God's work unfold, but God is at work in you so that you will and you will work for God's good pleasure. That you commit your head and your heart and your hands for God. Now you might say this year with, with all the COVID-19 restrictions, what can I really do? Even this year, you can still work out your salvation. You can still will and work for God's good pleasure, though it may take a little more self-motivation, perhaps a bit more creativity and initiative on our part. From home, we can still Pray and meditate and read our devotional resources from the upper room or other resources. Our Harmony Church website includes links to a number of discipleship and Christian education content for children, youth, and adults. We can also spend time this year reviewing how our generosity sustains and grows the ministries here at Harmony. And if it has been some time since you last prayed about and reflected on your offerings to support the ministries and mission here at Harmony, make this year a time to reflect and to pray about your gifts. For our regular offering to the church is a spiritual discipline. It is a discipline of faithfulness and hope, a discipline of patience and commitment. And yes, a it also involves a bit of sacrifice, too. Twice a month I receive a paycheck, and twice a month prayerfully I make my offering here to Harmony. And I am very blessed in my station in life that I've been able to maintain an average of a 10% offering this year. But not everyone is at that station in life. Only you know where you are in life and where, prayerfully, you're able to contribute to the ministries. But even when finances have been tight this year for me, I know God elicits hope in me, and I can be hopeful in my response and in my offering back to God. We can pray through the prayer chain. Let us know if you'd like to receive prayer chain notices. We can pray for those folks. We can write them letters. We can send cards. We can call members of the church that we know are living alone. Or we can call a member who is not a member of this church, calling the neighbor to invite into conversation to offer that person a time to help out when their needs arise. When we're at home, we can reflect on ways we can transform people's lives. Imagine this year 
ways that God may be calling you or this church community to impact the world, to transform people's lives here. Dream big and pray big, and let's talk about where God is leading you to minister to the world where we might will and work for God's good pleasure. But we can also participate in discipleship outside of the home, even in this season. For those who get out of the house a bit and can go shopping to stores, imagine that trip to the grocery store is your chance each week to share God's love and mercy by remembering to buy two or three items, food items for our food pantry, that we might use that to serve those in our community who are going without food. Imagine going to the store where the employees are wearing their masks hour after hour and you take time to look at one of those employees and say simply, I appreciate you and I appreciate the work you're doing here. Even that alone can make enough difference in a day. And I invite you this week also to think about whether Harmony Church can offer a fellowship time during the week itself, perhaps in the sanctuary for folks who don't get out much and don't have many chances to see one another, or holding a, a fellowship Zoom gathering each week. For if you've been at home too much this year, consider how we might make one morning a week a time for safe, healthy fellowship. It can be done, and the United Methodist women have found a way to do it here already, and we can talk about ways to do that. The Christian disciple participates in caring ministries, feeding ministries, hospitality ministries. And the disciple participates in teaching ministries and telling the stories of God's goodness. And the disciple listens to the sufferings and the trials of persons too afraid to come to church and even to persons who are even angry at the church. The disciple participates in lifting up persons who are ashamed and the downtrodden and the self-loathing. But in all of this, I'm not saying that we are machines that can do all of this work without a break. We do need time ourselves to reflect, time ourselves to recharge, time to re-equip our own selves, for Jesus did the very same thing too. And as we need to, take the time to reflect and recharge your lives, but after that time, prepare to serve again. Remember in that moment that Moses had judged and rejected those thirsty people and their livestock as they were walking through the arid desert. Moses had retorted in anger and judgment, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? Then with the people's concern of dying of thirst growing greater, Moses acted. Moses prayed for direction and for wisdom. And receiving that, Moses acted in leading the people to water. As we ponder what it means to be a Christian disciple, recall Moses at times was imperfect, and Moses needed a reminder he didn't have all the answers, he didn't have all the directions. Moses needed to turn to God in prayer. And witnessing God's direction, Moses could act on it. He participated in answering the needs of the crowds as he followed in God's direction. Go, therefore, disciples in Christ, and make disciples of all the nations and all the peoples as Jesus taught. For God has worked in you, is working in you, and shall work in you, so that you will and work for his good pleasure. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join in our prayer of confession this day. Ever faithful God, when we had turned aside from you and slid into the shadows to hide from your sight, you sought us out. You found us and invited us back into your light. By your grace, 
Grant us the courage to call to mind our sins against you and against our neighbor. We confess breaking your trust when we have broken our promise to you. Free us from our sins and free us from the shame and guilt that separate us from you. Strengthen us to turn aside temptations to sin and to turn our hearts towards you. O Christ our Savior. Amen. Facebook premiere time, you're welcome to do so. For healing and peace to all who have suffered during the course of this year's epidemic, especially the families of the 200,000 persons in the United States and one million worldwide who have died from COVID-19, we pray. Lord have mercy. For safe and supportive educational settings, whether in school or remote, for the teachers, staff, students, and their families, we pray. Christ, have mercy. For your power, Holy Spirit, to nurture love and compassion in our hearts, we give thanks and pray. Lord, have mercy. For the grace of Christ to guide and focus Christian disciples around the world, we give thanks and pray. Christ, have mercy. For the joys uplifting our hearts, for the concerns weighing on our souls. We bring all before you and ask your blessing on each according to your goodness. We give thanks and pray. Lord, have mercy. Let us then proclaim together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
to those you see this week and those you are in contact with to offer a sign of Christ's peace and to strengthen their faith this week. Peace be with you. And I give thanks for all that we have been able to offer as a congregation here in Marlowe and Falling Waters, West Virginia, as we continue to be able to serve our community that we've been able to offer of our plenty and our gifts for those who do not have. This week, again, I invite you to prayerfully consider an offering to the church to strengthen our ministries and our mission here. And I invite you to be in prayer as we listen to the doxology. to prosper us, your assurance to be with us, and the gifts you have granted us. With joyful gratitude, we return to you an offering from the harvest of our labors. Receive our offering, and bless it, to advance the work of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Beloved of God, friends in Christ, take to heart that Jesus Christ humbled himself and emptied himself to live among people and to embody God's grace for us. Therefore, be blessed, knowing that God is at work in you, preparing you, equipping you, and enabling you to work for his good pleasure. Amen. Amen.